Welcome to the Saturday Morning Success Talk Show, where we share with you the secrets of success in life, relationships, and in business. I'm Dennis Ramella, and streaming in live from our studios in Los Angeles, California, this is Sandra D. Robinson. Welcome, Sandra. Hey, Hi. hey, everybody. Dennis, you sound, you sound a little bit hollow. Is your microphone working there? I'm hoping so. Uh, okay. Is that any better? All righty. <laughs> we'll do a check on that just to make sure. Sounds good. Sound check. <laughs> Our new segment called Sound <laughs> exactly. Check. Exactly. Get them jumping <laughs> over there. Okay, good. Hey, how's your day going today? It's good. It's good. It's a little overcast. It's kind of nice and different here for Los Angeles, you know. It, but it's, it's good. We've got yeah, a good show today, hot. too, so I'm kind of excited to, to get things rolling. Well, I wonder what the temperature has been like in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> and, and our viewers are going, why would he wonder that? Well, we've got a, we've got a great guest today. His, his, uh, Ryan has just completed a tour of Russia. He is the, Ryan Avery is the youngest ever world champion of public speaking. He's just finished a tour in Russia and what, in about uh, 45 minutes or so, you'll be starting a tour of the U.S. for six months. So, <laughs> yeah, Ryan, welcome I to the show. On Tuesday. On Tuesday, Thank you start. You. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're so glad to have you. You, you know, you have, uh, you've accomplished a great goal, and as our guests are going to find out a little bit later on, you've accomplished some others as well, and we want to talk about all of those. But uh, tell us, first of all, what... What is a world champion of public speaking? Well, there is an organization called Toastmasters that is globally recognized in 116 countries, and there are about 300,000 Toastmasters across the globe. To be the world champion, about 30,000 people compete for the championship each year from 116 countries, wow. and there are six rounds in which you have to win first place in each round, and I won in 2012, so that's what it that's took. incredible. That's incredible. So, so tell us a little bit about your background. You're, uh, you're not as old as, as the guy sitting at this table, <laughs> so tell me, how did, how did you get so far? You're the youngest ever, is that right? That is. At the time, I was 25. I just turned 26. I was kind of in the mood to do something big. I was laying in bed one Saturday morning being a normal 20-something year old watching several YouTube videos. Okay. And this one came across where this person was going for the World Championship of Public Speaking. And I watched the video and I said, I can do that. So I, I walked outside to my bedroom uh, or outside of my living room where my wife was and I said, Chelsea, I'm gonna be the World Champion of Public Speaking this year. And she was like, that's a real thing? <laughs> and <laughs> she helped me uh, train, and it took about eight months of my life to to win. But it was really fun, and I'm glad I did it. Wow! Oh, that is great. But eight months, eight months start to finish is still pretty impressive, you know. Especially what I loved is your dedication, Ryan, because I know that you said you had some days, even on your birthday, you spent 12 hours reviewing everything and going over, you know, uh, your speech and preparing for that. And you had 30,000 competitors against you yeah. in order yeah. to be able to win the, the world championship. So that's a huge accomplishment that shows great ten tenacity, determination, willpower, you know. Um, have you always had those qualities, do you think? I would say I think they've been developed over the years. I think throughout the past five or six years really I've learned and understood the importance of reading and watching and surrounding myself with positive people uh, truthfully I did not read until after I graduated college which sounds embarrassing uh, but I, I, I have to admit it because I didn't and once I started reading I realized wow there there's so much more I have to learn and I wish I would have read at an earlier age uh, that just wasn't something my family really did, so I didn't do it. Um, but yeah, it, my my motto is dream big, and I I'm a 
big believer that you can do anything you set your mind to because everything we as humans see and feel and touch that is man-made we or woman made i should say too man and woman made that it's <laughs> it's created by us so the technology that we're using right now the airplane that i flew on yesterday the fork that i used to eat my breakfast everything was created from a dream so you have to dream and you have to dream big and I think it's been instilled in me for a while, but I've really been growing it these past five or six years. Now, that's, that's really good. So, and let me correct uh, Sandra. Sandra, I think he was only up against uh, 29,999 other people. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, so yeah. That, that makes it a lot easier. <laughs> So, so Ron, what, were there any speakers that you looked at or that you watched? You, I know that you watch YouTube videos. Were there any speakers that inspired you um, in your style? And, you know, as you were getting into this, did you watch a lot of other speakers from history and, and all that and, and you know, kind of emulate anyone? That's a great question. Right after I made that announcement, if you go to my YouTube channel at youtube.com backslash Avery Today, you can see the video that I uploaded on January that said, hi, my name's Ryan Avery. I'll be the world champion in public speaking this year. Uh -huh. And I, I kind of talk about it. Then I go, wow, what's next? Because <laughs> I didn't have any public speaking experience. So what I did is I bought the past 25 years of champions, and I watched first, second, and third place. So I watched 75 speeches because I wanted to develop and understand what's the difference between first and second place. And there were a variety of things that I discovered and found. The, the winner before me, Jock Elliott, he tried 34 times before he won. And so that was kind of a, oh, wow, this is my first time. You know, Am I really going to be able to do this? and several world champions it takes them several times and then i would watch ted speeches i would uh, read a lot of great speeches like mlk speech the gettysburg the classics um, anything and everything i could get my hand on i would read watch or listen to and then i would study their journey and how they did it and i realized there's no real there's formulas to speaking but there's no formula for you being a speaker what really matters is you having a message and committing to sharing that message. You can try 34 times or you can try one, but if you're speaking from the heart and if you really believe in something, you can get on stage and it will resonate with people. Uh, I like the fact that you made the video that said I'm going to be the world champion speaking this year. So, so what, but what was happening at that time when you first watch the video. Were, were you a Toastmaster already or? Yes, you have to be a Toastmaster in good standing. You also have to have delivered six speeches out of what's called your CC manual or your competent communicator manual in order to compete. So no one can just come up and give a speech. You have to be part of Toastmasters in order to do it. So I was a Toastmaster for uh, about a year before that. Okay, all right. So, so you already knew a little bit about speaking when you watched that video and thought, hey, I could do this. Some, really, the, the two main people that I could not have won the world championship were Randy Harvey, the 2004 world champion of public speaking. When I gave my first speech at the club level, I videotaped it. And someone came up to me afterwards and said, can I share that with a friend? I said, sure, absolutely. Well, that friend was, her friend was the world champion of public speaking. <laughs> and he invited me over to his house said, uh, I'd, like you to, I'd like you to come over, I have some questions to ask you. So I came over to his house and he sat me down in his office and he said, why do you want to win the world championship? I told him, I said, I really think I can do this, I can commit to this. And then he said, okay, I'll coach you, but you have to promise me one thing. And I said, okay, what is it? And he said, you can't give a speech. And I was confused. And he oh. said, you can only send a message from the heart. And it was really impactful for me, and he's a wonderful man, and I couldn't have won it without Randy. I also couldn't have won it without my wife, uh, Chelsea, who also coached me throughout the training. She is my manager now. She was my coach back then, and she woke up with me. She trained with me. 
you know, we were both working full-time jobs during this training. So I'd wake up at 5 a.m. I had worked from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. every morning for seven days a week. And then we'd spend an hour together before I went to work and she went to work. We'd go to work from 9 to 5. Then I would get done and I'd work from like 5 to 11. So I was working on it like seven hours a day every day for nine months with Chelsea. Wow, that's uh, incredible. Is, is Chelsea well, that's a true dedication. Also? Chelsea is not a speaker. Uh, have you ever heard that saying or th uh, where it talks about just because you're a great player doesn't mean you're a great coach or vice versa? Right, right. Um, there's been some <laughs> – she's a great coach. She's wonderful at coaching, but she her forte is not necessarily – um, being getting up on stage and speaking, she's getting better at it. She's applying to. She's uh, there's a TED Women conference coming up that she's uh -huh. hopefully going to be speaking at, and she wants to get out on stage. I think what her problem was at the first uh, part of her career was she didn't know what she wanted to talk about, and that's what a lot of people I think get nervous about when they go and speak. When I talk to my clients, is they know they kind of want to be a speaker but they don't know exactly what their message is. So helping them identify and find out what they're passionate about uh, gives them energy to go up on stage and, and speak. Oh, that's, yeah. I, that, speaking from your heart is definitely something that, uh, we have had uh, Maurice Domino. I don't know if you know Maurice Domino. Mm. That's one yes. of the things he talks about is, is making sure that you're, that you're speaking from your heart because people can feel the difference. Absolutely. That's really something that, uh, that you know, if not, it's just like, you know, even just doing this show, uh, if, if my jokes were written by somebody else or something, that's why some of my jokes aren't funny because it, they just come from my heart. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's, it's real and that's what right, it's all right, about. Right, right, so, right. So what- Ryan, there, there had to be, sorry. I was going to say there had to be days with that kind of schedule, getting up at 5, working till 8.30, that you just didn't feel like doing it. You know, there had to be times that you woke up and you were tired or, you know, um, evenings where you really wanted, you know, friends were going out to dinner and you just didn't want to. How, how, do you, how did you push through? Did you ever give yourself a break? Did you ever say, all right, tonight we're going to go see a movie um, when you felt like that? How did you push through those tough times? Yes. Definitely 100%. There were mornings, and, you know, when, when your wife is laying there and you're laying there and it's cold out and it's February and it's 5 a.m. and you're not running, <laughs> you're not running the heat, you really don't want to get out of bed. Um, but there were several <laughs> things, <laughs> there were several things that I did to, I, I believe in systems and I believe in strategies. So setting up systems that help you be successful. So at the edge of my bed, I put what would Michael Phelps do, and I wrote that. And that helped me be inspired and energized because I wanted to be the best at something, and he was the best at something. Uh, when I was training, I had, I had broke my leg, uh, so I had to give several speeches while I was on crutches. And that was really hard because I had to uh, take a, a week off because I was laying in, in the bed, and I was on not on drugs, but I was medicated, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I say that well, sometimes when I'm speaking. <laughs> technically, I was on drugs. So, so um, he, when so I run for so I, got it. I know they're gonna they're gonna take that clip out. So I was is, on drugs, is what they're gonna take. <laughs> that's exactly right. Exactly. It's gonna be like the uh, the Olympics, you know. And they say, no, I'm sorry, he he didn't. We gotta take his title away because he was he was doping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I remember one time I, it was right after I won the district. So I was going to the world championship. I was really excited. They, they packed this room full of Toastmasters and non Toastmasters for me to go and practice my speech for the world championship. And I go up there, I give my speech and two minutes into it, I pause for 28 seconds like this. And I forget my lines. <laughs> I, I know it's 28 seconds because I have it on video. And it's awkward. And uh, getting 
over those things is really hard. But what you have to remind yourself of is surround yourself with positive people. So Chelsea and Randy were there to lift me up and to encourage me. So if you want to be successful, whether it's in life or relationships or business, you have to have people there who will bring you up. Because 100% of the time, you will fail. You will fall. You will get embarrassed. You'll break a leg or you'll do something that will mess you up. Sometimes you need people to pick you up. And if there weren't my fellow Toastmasters, or if there wasn't Chelsea, or if there wasn't Randy, I mean, Chelsea, there were t mornings when I was like, I don't want to get up. And she would make me literally get up. Physically, she would pull me out of bed and say, get up. You want to do this. We committed to this. Go and do it. And if she wasn't there, wow. I would have been laying in bed. Wow, that is good. Yeah. That's well, amazing. I always say a big part of the team you know, um, you need to have people that will mentor you, but just as important, you need to have people that will cheerlead you, you know? Definitely. And your wife actually is a blessing to be both. Yeah. Definitely, yes. Oh, yeah. But there were times, you also asked too, or did I take some time off? Uh, very few times, yes, but a lot of the times I was so focused where it was really hard to say no when your friends are going out to dinner and they're treating. There was this one time I got invited to go, and it was a limo. It was a free limo to a John Mayer concert, tickets bought, everything, and I had to turn it down because I, if I, there's always things on the table, right? But you have to put a strategy together for what you want to do and what you want to accomplish. And there are things in life that you have to say no to if you want to be successful. And uh, it, you have to get good at saying no, even when it's really hard to do. Yeah. Uh, Did you ever make it to the John Mayer concert? Have you seen him never. yet? <laughs> never. Never, no. So you're, well, you need to do is put out there this story and eventually somebody will send you tickets to a John Mayer concert. That's true. <laughs> That's true. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> I, you, you gotta have him, uh, have, have John Mayer on the show and then uh, bring bring Ryan in as a uh, extra guest and let, let him do a concert right here on the show. <laughs> That's right. That would Wouldn't be cool. Be great? <laughs> So that's a good point, and that, that's like a little clip. You know, people that watch this show, I think you, you've got to write some stuff down and say, hey, this is something i got to commit to. And knowing something like you've got to say no, even learn to say no even when it's hard, I think was a great little golden nugget that you just said. So that yeah. I appreciate you sharing that, and yeah. I think our viewers do too. Of course. So yeah. we have... Uh, I wanted to also talk to you about the the process that it takes to, uh, we're going to take a break in a little bit here in about uh, two minutes or so, and uh, when okay. we come back from that, then I want to, you to talk about an award that you won when you were in college, and what process okay. you went through, and what was similar to winning the world champion of public speaking. So that's what I'm looking for. Uh, before we go to break, though, why don't you tell us a little bit about how do you how do you choose somebody to be your mentor or your positive influence? That's a great question. I think sometimes it can fall in your lap, like Randy did for me, and then I also think it can be based on you and what you're interested in. For example, one of the things that I did when I was training is I realized it wasn't going to just take one person who was going to help me. It was going to be a team of people. But instead of having them all help me in different areas, I specifically asked them to help me in the areas that they were the best at. So Randy and Chelsea were my board of director chairs. And then I had about 10 to 20 people helping me on a variety of different uh components of speaking, so people who were good at vocal variety, people who were good at gestures or message or opening and closing. And I would videotape myself, I would send it to them, and I would say, please focus on the areas that I have asked you to. And they gave me specific feedback in the areas that they were great at. So what I would recommend is making sure you can get somebody or watch people and see what their best qualities are and have them coach you in that specific area. Don't have some one, don't think it's just one person that you need to coach you. Well, that's great. And we're going to, we're going to go to break and when we come back, we'll find out about another award that Ryan won when he was younger 
and uh, we'll be back right after this break. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. I did. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terracloth cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. Totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you know that strollers have the right of way on the sidewalk? Yes. Yep, I did. Did you guys Did know? you know that kids who eat breakfast have higher GPAs? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. That's actually what I was going to say. Did you know babies should never touch silver? It's really bad for them. I knew that. Did you guys know that statistically friendly kids have more friends? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. I'm putting that on my blog. I just put it in mine. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? To be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Find some more. What's he doing? But he can't. <laughs> Look at him. It's just not done. Please, sir, I want some more. More? 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 Please, sir. He ha ha! Thank you. What? Well, we did say please, sir. Yes, he did. And thank you. Yeah, and thank you. He's a wonderful boy. <laughs> I do like the boy. Please, and thank you. Pass it on. Thank you. Hey, welcome back to the Saturday Morning Success Talk Show. With myself and Sandra D. we are interviewing Ryan Avery, the world youngest ever world champion of public speaking. And we're so glad to have you back here, Ryan. Uh, we promised our viewers before we went to break that we would talk about a, another award that a lot of people have maybe heard of this award before that you won when you were in college. Can you tell us about this? Yeah, when I was in college, I wanted to put together a team of people to put together a multimedia package. When I went to Colorado State University, and we had a media department there where people worked in the magazine, the TV, radio, and newspaper uh, departments. And we had never all worked together to create something that could have really gone across all four channels in a large way. So I went to my, my boss and said, look, I'd like to create a position called the multimedia coordinator position and put together packages where we can have all four medias represented. And he loved the idea, but not everyone did. Yeah, when when there's been a system in place for 20 or 30 years, you get pushback because people like the way that it's been working and some people can't see your vision. But as a leader, it's important to keep moving forward and not to be mad at those people who can't see your vision because if, if people can't see your vision, it's, it's your fault really as a leader. Uh, you're supposed to be able to show them and explain it in a way that they understand it. So I put this first media package together called AIDS Awareness, Today's Challenges, and it 
uh, it was very successful after all of the ups and downs that we had of people saying no, people trying to stop it, and it won an Emmy. Uh, I was 23 wow. years old, and I won my first Emmy, which was pretty exciting. And I remember getting the call, and I, I was like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it was kind of unfortunate, though. I was really, really broke at the time, and I was living in Portland when I got the call, so I couldn't go back and accept the award and go to the award ceremony. Wow. Uh, but my team did, and they sent me photos, and it was really fun. Just to see them be all excited, and uh, I wish I could have been there, but didn't have the money at the time. Oh, that's incredible. So where do you have the statue? Um, it's at the university, and then I have this fun little certificate. When we go on break, I can I can get it out and show you. I gotta frame it. I, yeah, it's that'd in be my fun. files. Oh, that's okay, great. I'll get it out. Yeah, <laughs> you have Emmy Award. That's Are you it. kidding? You should have that framed. That should be framed front and center. Uh, I know my wife. I know my wife keeps telling me I got to get it framed, and I just keep forgetting about it. My trophy is my world championship trophy is just kind of like in the corner, and then these kind of things are there. But it's <laughs> he's, he's got a, just a pile, a pile of awards. His whole garage is going to be filled up by the time he's my age. No, no, no. <laughs> so it was. So. I love what you said about um, if people don't see your vision, it's your fault. Oh, I and, love that um, too. It sounds similar to something that I say whenever I, I'm talking with folks and I'm teaching them how to, you know, how to carry themselves on video, which is, yeah. it, there's a lot of similarities between presenting on video, presenting on stage. And I kind of say the same thing. And what I say to them is if the show is boring, it's your fault. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but it's, again, it, how, do you, how do you encourage people? How, how do you know? If you are not getting through to people with your vision, is it this, there's a glass over? Do people just not take action? And how do you correct that? Great question. I, I, that is a really good question. I, I'm trying to reflect back on that time in my life. I think, uh, and when I continuously do it, I think what happens when people can't catch my vision of what I'm trying to accomplish, um, I'll, I try to find out their style. I think timing is everything. So sometimes people like to get called out. Sometimes people like to get uh, talked to in a one-on-one -on -one session after 24 hours of the conversation even being started. So I think as a leader, you have to adapt to the other person's communication style and to be able to explain it in a way that they will get it. If it is the right person, and there's an understanding where there were people on the team who might not necessarily been the right person for the job to create this content, you can teach video editing skills, you can teach speaking skills, but you can't teach passion, you can't teach energy. So for me, I'd so much rather work with someone who is willing to work with you and might not necessarily know how to do it, but has the energy to do it. I remember working with one person who was adamant about not doing this. He hated it, did not like it, tried to stop me 100%, thought it was wrong. And you have to remain positive in that situation. You have to remain the person who is, is saying, look, I'm sorry I can't explain this to you. You will see it one day. I, I'm, I'm sorry, we're gonna move forward and the team and I are still gonna do this. And I remember him coming up to me afterwards and apologizing after we had launched it and said, you know, I really wish I would have been part of the team. And I said, no problem, not at all. And he actually helped me with the next multimedia package and he did a really good job and it was exciting to, to see him on board. But some people just can't see it and that's fine. Um, so I would just say being able to deal with them in a way where you, you stay positive and you try to adapt to their way of communicating. That's good. In a way, it's kind of walking in their shoes, you know, putting yeah. yourself in their place, going, what are, they, what are they really feeling? What are they really seeing? And how can you kind of cross that, um, that border and help your brain speak the same language? Definitely. My favorite quote of all time that has absolutely changed my life is by Stephen Covey, and it's, first, seek to understand before being understood. Oh, and if yes. all of us understood that, and if all of us really did that, 
this world would be such a better place. And I remember I had a really bad incident a couple of weeks ago, and I was I was kind of trying to get them to understand me. And then I stepped back and I was and I remembered his quote. And I talked to this person where I was trying to understand them, and the complications uh, dissolved. We understood each other. We both apologized, and now we're right on the track where we need to be. So that's my favorite quote, and I I, I agree with you. That's good. Hey. And, um, you had also mentioned something to us about four pillars. One of those, which could be, you know, something that would change the world, is uh, giving back. You know, you give back a certain percentage. And and would you be able? Would you be willing to share what you call your four pillars? Because I think that it's a very interesting way to balance your energy in your life. Absolutely. Uh, so Chelsea and I, my wife, we live on four pillars. There was a time, sorry, I keep pushing up my glasses. I gotta get new glasses, because <laughs> it keeps sliding down my face. Uh, Chelsea and I live on four pillars. When we were in living in Portland, I had applied to 75 jobs with no luck. I even went to Quiz, I remember I go, oh God, I gotta get to Quiznos and get a job, that's fine. And they didn't even hire me. Um, so, so I was really, I was really that wasn't low meant on to money. Be. Yeah, was not meant to be. I was really low on money, and we had been fighting about money on her spending and my spending, and we were really down. We had $84 in our bank account, and we decided to have a meeting and talk about, okay, what are the things in our life that we really need and that we really want? And we created these four pillars that we still live by today, and they're called Live give, save, and travel. And what we decided to do was take our money and split it up into four different accounts. So live a happy and healthy life, give 10% to good causes, uh, travel to see what else is out there, and save for tomorrow. So I'll talk about a couple of them and then we can talk about more later, but I'll talk about the, the giving one. Um, for me, when I was in college, I would hear my friends say, man, when I'm a multimillionaire, I can't wait to give. And I realized I didn't want to be a multimillionaire to start giving my money because I feel like no matter where you are in life, there will always be challenges and there'll all, you'll, you're just constantly moving to the next tier. So if you're not going to give 10% now, you're never going to give 10%. And, or most likely you're not going to give it. Uh, my belief is if you can't live off of 90% of what you're making, you're doing something wrong. So we uh, decided to give 10% away, and right then when we had $84, and my wife goes, well, no, we can't do it. We're going to do it when we get more money. And I said, babe, if we don't do this now, we'll never do it. And I remember, because we had the money, we set aside $8.40 uh, to give away and we started right then and there when we were really down. And the next day I got a call from Nike and they hired me, uh, they paid me in advance so I could pay for rent. And ever since we've been donating 10% to, to good causes. And then we break up our other pillars into that uh, area or different area. So we only live off of 55% of what we make. We save 25 and then we travel with 10. I love that, I love that. Yeah, my, I my, love that. My wife and I actually give ten percent also, and that's uh, it is a really good feeling to know that you're doing something yeah. to, to help others out. Uh, our our pillar. I think it's uh, important. Oh, what's that? Oh no, I was just saying. I think it's important because why I say ten percent and versus a dollar amount is it lets you know. It makes you feel good. It, it erases the guilt. Because uh, sometimes you might say, did I give enough or did I give too uh -huh. much? Am I taking care of the right, am I taking care of myself or am I taking care of others? So whether you're a multimillionaire or you're making $50,000 a year, it's good because you're both giving the same amount in the lifestyle that you live. And it's nothing to do with religion. A lot of people ask me what, what's my religion or who do I tie to. It's just about being a good human. And it's about giving back to the people who really need help. The average American only donates 2% of their income to good causes. So think about how good our country would be if we times that by five. Right. I mean, the world would be an incredible place to live in. So really think about giving that 10%. I, I really, really 
if I can if I could make one impact on the world, that is the impact that I would make is people giving ten percent. I like that. Now my my wife and I have six children and now four grandchildren. So that last pillar on, mm -hmm. on travel, I so I have to kinda of laugh and I think, okay, well let's uh let's wait and see what happens when Ryan and Chelsea uh, start having kids if the travel is still going to get in there. But uh, uh, I'd it like might. to tell me a little bit about your experience with travel so far. You've been been around the globe a little bit and around the country. Yeah. Uh, we've been to some fun places, Chelsea and I. We've been to Egypt and we've been to Dubai and Russia and the Bahamas and Prague and we're going to some fun countries this year and next year. Uh, I think what's important to understand, because some people, they'd say, well, yeah, you're the world champion, you get to travel, but what, most of the ones that I just listed right now were not having to do with speaking. Um, these were before I had won the world championship. We were making collectively less than $75,000 a year, and we still were able to travel to those countries. I think it's important to travel to see what else is out there. Um, your way is not the right way. It's just a way of doing it. And, and when I say you, I mean my way too. We all live in this world together, but, there, but there's two truths or three truths or four truths sometimes to the same problem. When I was in Russia, I, I was still reminded of that uh, when I was just seeing all the different aspects of similarities between Russia and the United States and the differences. Um, and you get really cool experiences. I remember one time when I was in Egypt, one of the coolest things that happened to me is uh, while I was over there, the person who was taking me around uh, paid off the person who was, a pro I don't know if I'm even allowed to tell this story, I'm probably gonna get arrested, but. <laughs> well, you started it now. Paid off the person, <laughs> paid off the person for me to go into the Great Pyramid by myself. Wow. So I'm in the Great Pyramid by myself, and I'm getting to experience this while I'm in Egypt. And I get in there, and oh god, I feel really bad about saying this, but I lay in the tomb, <laughs> and I just want to experience it. And the lights go out. No joke, lights go out. I freak out. <laughs> and I'm in the Great Pyramid all by myself, and the lights go out. Uh, with and I, I crawl out. And I realized I would have never had that experience. I would have never been able to see that or do that or get that story if I didn't travel. So travel, go see what else is out there. It's it's amazing. What well, what was your biggest eye Wait, opener? What's the barking? What well, I don't know. I hear barking too. <laughs> You hear barking. Oh no, sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I have three dogs in my house right now. Uh, my aunt and grandmother are staying with us, and they decided to bring their dogs. So I apologize if that is ruining the show. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, it's fine. But I, I have to admit, you're talking about travel, and I was wondering how you do that with dogs. But now I, I don't have a dog. I don't have a dog now. <laughs> yeah, that, that would make right a big now. difference. <laughs> yes, I do. They're fun to wake up to and to have to walk. I, yeah, no. <laughs> I, I've got a miniature horse, and we would have trouble getting him on the plane, I'm sure. Or her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what was, a, what was a big eye-opener for you? Uh, we're going to take a break here in about a minute and a half. But if you can share with us an eye-opener going to another country that you were like, wow, I just can't believe this is the way this is done. Um, tell us that, and then when we come back, we're going to do our little segment that uh, Sandra yeah. finds some, Sandra D finds some news about uh, some interesting thing that the main media didn't pick up, and we call it our really segment. So we'll do that when we come back. But first, tell us what's cool. uh, in about a minute. Tell us something that was an eye opener for you when you went to another country that was different. One of the things, so Chelsea and I are really touchy feely. We're one of those gross couples, the uh, you know, hold hands and kiss, and <laughs> I. I, I'm that way all the way. And we were in Dubai and we had just landed in Dubai and I gave her a kiss. And the man next to me said, you may not do that here and got really intense about it. 
And we were like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. And we walked off the plane and men and women are separated when you're waiting for people. So the men are over here and the women are over here and it's very different and you're not allowed to hold hands in public. And wow. uh, in certain areas, women have to be covered up. So that experience of understanding um, even what we don't consider PDA yeah. is PDA in other countries. So we're gonna, that was probably one of the biggest shocks for me. We're going to be back right after this. More with Ryan Avery. Okay. in protecting your financial future and choose to save. You can't mess with a big dog. Well, you're wrong. I'm wrong? You're the one who misrepresented the facts. Misrepresented the facts. Are you kidding? Your proposal is ridiculous. You have no right to call it. You are the worst example of politics. I stand for something. Flip flop. I stand for something. Flip flop or flip flop. Your proposal is ludicrous. My proposal will go exactly the way I say it. Somebody needs a timeout. That's the power of one. one I motion that I be issued the timeout. And wow, me too. Yeah, for sure, you should get a timeout. I apologize. And I motion that we, uh, I, start showing more respect. Civility. Pass it on. You're watching Eagle Vision, Mount Sassino College's very own television channel. Hey, welcome back to the Saturday Morning Success Talk Show. Uh, we have our little segment we want to share with you now. You watch uh, main media, maybe. But on the main media, you miss some really good stories. So Sandra D from her studios in Los Angeles, California, has some uh, news for us. What's the news today? I, I do. I do. Well, we like to call this our really segment. And um, Ryan, you're going to be here with us joining in. So I'm going to invite you to comment on these. Um, I like to go through and find a few of the news items that perhaps don't get all that much attention. They don't go mainstream, but sometimes they're so incredible, you have to say, really? So um, the first one we have, uh, you know, if this speaking thing doesn't work out for you, Ryan, there may be an alternative <laughs> job for you available. So apparently some people might consider this the best job ever. You get paid to spend 15 weeks in bed. NASA is looking <laughs> to have some, have a few people, I knew Dennis would like this one. You get paid about $5,000 a month and you get to stay in bed. It sounds like a dream job. Wow. Right, Dennis? Like the dream job in wow. bed. Oh, Except I've got that one, one thing, covered. You are not allowed to sit up. 
You are not allowed to walk around, no standing up. You have to be lying in bed. They do have you exercising, but you have to be prone. And oh. you're allowed to do things like work on the internet or read, but um, for how long did I say? 15 weeks. You have to lie prone. This is their way of, um, you know, testing what the biomechanical, you know, results would be in uh, musculoskeletal and psychological effects of long-term confinement to a reduced gravity environment would be. So, would you sign up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, you could like do, no. Ryan, you can do this one. Now, now, listen to me carefully. You can even make more than the 5000 a month. You get cameras set up in there, and, and you can still give speeches from there. In fact, I have a name for the show. It's called Pillow Talk. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't pay me $30,000 to do that, although you probably could pay Chelsea to do that. Uh, Chelsea would probably be down for him, but... <laughs> me, oh, that's it. Literally sounds torturous to me to lay down. Yes. I can, oh, I, I can't think about. I that. agree with you. I I agree with you one hundred percent. So <laughs> the the latest poll, a new poll is out. Um, story number two, new poll is out saying America's favorite age. They pulled Americans mm -hmm. from all different walks of life, different ages, some with kids, some without, married, single, and the compilation came down to the favorite age as being. What do you think? Twelve, twenty. 30, oh. what do you think? 35. 26. <laughs> no. <laughs> 50. Five, 50. zero. Hey, that's it right where I am. I haven't hit it yet, so at least I got something to look forward to. Hey, good. Yeah. It's true. I'm 50 now, it's so true. that I... And, um, if, it's good. You're good. Dennis is good. If actors Johnny Depp, Jodie Foster, and George Clooney are at the half-century mark, then what could not be appealing about that <laughs> thought that was kind of funny anyway it was a poll online so it was not a scientific poll i should probably say that but over 2250 american adults um were involved in this harris interactive survey and um so some people i had one woman that said i thought this was interesting you have all at, at the about the age of 50 she said you have almost every opportunity She's a psychologist um, with a private practice in Long Beach, New Jersey. She said, you're young enough to be famous or start an organic farm and still have the muscle tone to work eight hours a day. <laughs> Random. Um, you're old enough to have wisdom, but young enough that your parents are still alive. So you have a chance the young man on the bus to get out of his seat for you, or you can date the young man. The more I think about it, the more appealing it is. I love that quote. <laughs> I love that. It, it is a good That's age. Awesome. In fact, you can start your own TV show at 50. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, there you go, like you. That's right. But uh, on the average, though, men wanted to be younger than women, choosing 47 over the <clears throat> average perfect age. Um, and females preferred 53. Wow. Mm -hmm. thought that was interesting. Huh. So... And then our final story, I saved this one till last because I just thought that this was incredible. Um, Ryan, have you, have you been to Africa yet? Uh, only Egypt. Okay. Um, so Zimbabwe might be in the future for you. My next just stop so is Madagascar you know. in Africa. <laughs> Ooh, cool. I've always wanted to go to Madagascar. Okay, but um, for anyone that's traveling to Zimbabwe, you might want to check underneath your bed. Ooh. A director of a Zimbabwe hotel said that he was shocked when a maid discovered a crocodile lurking beneath the bed in his room. Oh, no. <coughs> Guy Whitehall, as a director at the Kumani Lodge, said he was eating his breakfast when he heard the maid scream at discovering a 330-pound croc oh, cool. under his bed. Yeah. <laughs> the really disconcerting, this is his quote, the really disconcerting, disconcerting thing is that I was seated on the edge of the bed barefoot, just centimeters away from him. <laughs> wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. The one uh, apparently, one crocodiles survive because they're able to keep quiet. <laughs> so, if that scares wow. you away, um, you know, the, the good news is there was a happy ending. They released him into the, the Turgui River, and they did not kill him, and he didn't kill anyone. But could you imagine 
I mean, wow. I, get, I get upset over a spider. Can you imagine? Really? Is that is that a real story? Because it sounds like a croc. Yes. <laughs> no. Oh, uh, that's God. good. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> so, really? <laughs> Hey, those are some great really, stories. that really is the deal. Yep. Great stories. I appreciate yep. that. That's great. So let's uh, <laughs> let's talk to Ryan about it. So Ryan, you know you got to watch it now when you're when you're under <laughs> when you're on a bed. Uh, I don't know if the Marriott. The new one. You're, He's you're, gonna be checking underneath. <laughs> yeah, keep checking underneath now and look, but uh, <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. be barefoot. My worst my worst hotel experience was I rolled over one night. I was really exhausted, and I rolled over on a huge clipped toenail. Oh, oh, and, no! oh wow. <laughs> Wow. It was horrible. Yeah. But I think I'd still rather take the toenail than the crocodile. Wow. I couldn't do the crocodile. Oh yeah. And I thought <laughs> I, I, I thought I had here in Paris once. Uh huh. Oh. I, I woke up, I, I rolled over onto the pillow and there was yeah, and that was in Paris. And I thought that was my experience of a hotel in Paris. Not quite what I had imagined. Not good. Yeah. Not no. good. So <laughs> overcoming challenges like crocodiles and toenails are important <laughs> in, in uh, being successful. That's right. <laughs> so That's tell right. us a little bit about how how people can can follow you. You're on this tour. In fact, I actually signed up when you're going to be out here in Ontario, California, in November, Great. I think it is, to come to uh, to one Great. of your uh, events. So tell us how people can hook up with you, get in contact with you, give us your Website, address, phone number, credit card numbers, whatever you want to share with our, our viewers. <laughs> well, I'd really like to see you out at one of my tour stops. I'm going to 50 cities across North America starting next week. There will be an opportunity for you to come. The first 150 people at each event are free. So if you go to howtobeaspeaker.com, just all one word, howtobeaspeaker.com, the graphic right there will take you to the cities that you can register for. Most likely, I'll be going to a city near you. Uh, you can also um, email me at ryan at howtobeaspeaker.com if you have any questions. I work with business professionals mostly, and I help them put together winning speeches or presentations. So if they have a keynote that they need to deliver or if they have a presentation that they're putting together for a conference or for a sales pitch, I help them put together and utilize a formula that is guaranteed to what I call win. And uh, that's what I do. I also have a book coming out from McGraw-Hill. It comes out in February. It's called Speaker yeah. Leader Champion. And that'll hit stores in February, but pre-sales are already on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all of the online websites, 1-800-CEO. Uh, I forget that, that website, but that's yeah, okay. they're going to be on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and definitely pick that up. But go to howtobeaspeaker.com. I'm writing articles every day. And uh, thank you for having me on the show. It's been oh, wonderful. Yeah. So tell us again the name of the book. What is, can I? Oh, yeah, the name of the book one more time. Name of the book is Speaker Leader Champion, How to Succeed at Work Through Public Speaking. So what we've done is I have a co-author, Jeremy Donovan, and we have broken up the book into three sections. So speaking, leading, and winning. And what we've done is giving you uh, communication techniques and strategies that will help you advance in those three categories in your career. And it all links back to communicating. Excellent. Oh, that sounds like a, no, I've, yeah. I've got to ask a really common question if you don't mind, okay. because yeah. here you are, you're a champion. And I bet that there are some people that might be watching the show and thinking, well, he's accomplished that he's dedicated and he didn't have any fear. There's an awful lot of people that have that fear of public speaking and of presenting in general. What are some yeah. basic techniques that you can advise to get over fear? One of the things that happens is you let your mind creep in, and it's just this rolling effect where the little thing will lead to the big thing of making you just feel incredibly weak and powerless and not confident. So what I tell my clients is make sure you find something, a song lyric or a poem or something that you can repeat over and over again in your head to keep that 
from not being distracting yourself. Another thing that Chelsea and I do is we make sure we talk about what we just did uh, in the past tense or uh, where in the past tense, sorry. So we'll go up and right before I give a good speech, I'll say, man, that speech went wonderful. I got a standing ovation. People came up and asked me for my signature. I talk as it already happened. And that really yeah. builds a lot of confidence in me because now I go on stage and I go, oh, I already did this. I, this is great. It's going to be wonderful. And nice. it kills my, my nerves. That positive. That's great. It's kind of, it's kind of like when um, I'll tell people to, uh, to envision their best outcome. You know, what is yeah. the best thing that can happen? Is it that you want people to sign up for your website, that you want people to donate, that you want people to purchase, what, you know, that yeah. you want a standing ovation, and then actually visualize that happening so that when, like you said, you get up there, you're like, ah, I've already done this. It's exactly. so much easier. I think that's awesome. Exactly. I, yeah, awesome. Perfect. So piece of advice then for somebody, if they have, like you said, you wanted to do something big, and you yeah. saw that public speaking was something you could do. What, what do you think people need to look at inside themselves if they say, hey, I want to I do something big? You know, should they do something they just think that they could, could uh, that, that's easy to accomplish? Or should they do something that they, that they really love or know something about? Okay, first, it's important to realize there is nothing special about me. I'm just a normal person, and you are too. But what makes us different is being able to talk to ourselves and make an impact on ourselves first. I tell people, if you want to make an impact on the world, you have to make an impact on yourself first. It goes back to what we talked about at the beginning. I believe you personally can do anything you want in this planet, on this planet, anything anything you just have to convince yourself and tell yourself you can do it so i i would say if you want to do something that you know nothing about but that's what you want to do go for it if you're passionate about being a public speaker go for it you know you're going to have your ups and downs you know there are going to be people who don't believe in you you know there are going to be times when you you'll break a leg or you'll pause for 28 seconds or things will happen but if you put your positive pressure out there, and I call it positive pressure because once you say it, uh, there's pressure that you want to accomplish it, then you can do it. I, I really believe it. You can absolutely do it. If someone would have told me two years ago I would have flown to Moscow with my wife to give a speech, I would have probably said, you're a little crazy. But <laughs> that just happened last week. Wow. And you yeah. just have to believe it. You have to believe it. Have to. I like how you use the uh, term positive pressure because pressure can either hold you back or can push you forward mm -hmm. depending on which direction it's coming from. And we, just, we make that determination in our mind, don't we? Definitely, 100%. Yes. So, well, we have loved having you on the show. We've got just a couple minutes left before we sign off for the week. And we... W we wanted to thank you for taking your time. You literally have been flying to all around Russia and leave in just a day or two for this tour of the United States. So we're grateful that this little yeah. segment of time has worked out for you to, to share some advice with our, with our viewers. Uh, again, Absolutely. one more time, thank you. Uh, again, one more time, if you can give your, your website again for people to, uh, to sign up, to come to one of your events. Absolutely. It's howtobeaspeaker.com, and you can go to howtobeaspeaker.com backslash tickets. Also, if you're in the Houston area and you would like to help me pack this weekend uh, for six months, <laughs> you may come by my house and help me figure out how I'm going to pack all four seasons in two suitcases. That should be fun. I'm going, I'll be in like Layers. Chicago and Hawaii and the, literally every kind of element and weather you can possibly imagine. It's going to be awesome. Oh, that's great. And don't... Layers, layers, layers. Yeah. Layers, definitely. <laughs> layers, two colors, layer. <laughs> that's it. Don't forget definitely. to bring. Are you going to have some, some time to do something fun, I hope? Yeah, I just got... 
I just got yeah. scuba certified, so I'm planning on going to get scuba certified this, uh, or get, I just got scuba certified, and I'm planning on um, going to Hawaii and Florida to um, to go scuba diving for the first time. So that should be pretty fun. Oh, that's excellent. excellent. Well, thank you again. We, we love having you here on yes. the show, and we wish you the best of luck with your tour uh, around the country and continuing around the world. And uh, congratulations on your, your scuba certification. Uh, we're going to dive on out of here now for the day. And remember, <laughs> the one thing that we tell you every week, that one thing to do is that if you're thinking about being successful, quit thinking about it. Start doing something about mm. it. I want to hear by next week that you've done at least one more thing to get you closer to your goal. See you next week.